Welcome back to the continuation of my Premiere Pro editing process. If you missed the first video, we got all of our footage imported into Premiere Pro, we got our files structured, we got proxies created, we got everything color graded, and we got the audio sounding good and uniform throughout. So if you missed that, go check it out in the video up here in the little card. And without further ado, let's jump into the meat and potatoes of the editing process, the cutting up and chopping up to create the spine of the video. Let's jump in. Okay, so we're jumping back into our file here. And just in case you closed your file like I did, it's really easy to reopen it. So what you want to do is go to your original file that you had made into your working files. And this new Premiere Pro project file opens up and you just double click that and it's going to pop up right back where you had it before. So here we are. If you recall, we have everything color graded. We have it all sounding nice. We have our raw sequence. So this is going to remain untouched so we can actually just close it out so we don't get confused and do anything we regret to that sequence. We have our B-roll that we'll be able to sprinkle in throughout. And again, we're going to look at that later. But right now, what we're looking at is the spine of the video. So this is the part that requires just patience to play it, pause it, chop it up, move it around however we want to get it looking and flowing the way we want. So I'm actually gonna go into my editing panel here because it opens up my timeline a little bit more. I don't need to see a ton of what's on screen because I can listen for when I'm talking. So I'm gonna zoom in here and we wanna start the video at a spot that makes sense. We wanna start it when I begin talking, right? So I'm gonna move my playhead and listen for that point. What's up everybody, Alex here today. All right, so that's when I started the video. So I'm gonna zoom in on that point a little bit further and I can see when I began talking. I kinda of wanna start right there. So what I'm gonna to do to chop that part off, I'm gonna press C on the keyboard and hold Shift. And now it's gonna cut everything from top to bottom. So I can press V to return to my regular grabber tool. Otherwise I have my toolbar over here. And then I grab all of this, hit delete. And now that removes it. So if I click this empty space, I click delete again, and I can scroll to the beginning of my timeline, and that's where my video starts. If I press space bar, it'll play. What's up everybody, Alex here. Today I wanna to talk about your phone camera and how to get the most out of it when it comes to film and photography. And that's where I'll have my intro go. So I'll press C again, hold shift, click, and that creates a cut there. And then I'll scrub forward to when I begin talking my computer is not too jittery on me. It's often said that the best camera is the one you have with you. And that statement is especially true today. All right, so I want to cut it right there when I start talking. Press V again. Select this section of the video. Delete. And then I have this empty space, and I can click this and drag it over. And my intro will go somewhere in there. Now you'll see that when I drug that over, these clips are gonna stay the same. You wanna try to keep these together as much as possible because this is your synced audio. If I end up moving this, my audio is gonna get way off. So I don't want that to happen. I just wanna go slow and be mindful of what I'm moving, where I'm moving it to, and how that's affecting the overall audio of the video. Now these don't matter as much. I know that they play one after another, so I can just backspace them over and they go back to back just like that and we'll sync up just fine. One final tip before we get started editing, you wanna make sure this little button here, this toggle proxies button is turned on. That will ensure that you're playing back a lower quality version of your image and your computer's not gonna to struggle to process that high quality 4K video that we rendered. So I'm actually gonna pause the video while I go through and chop this up and edit and then I'll jump back in in a second once we've got it complete. Alrighty, that's all chopped up. Took me only about 30 minutes or so, not too bad, just a short five minute video. So you can see I have all these little cuts and chops and this is the full spine of the video as it flows. So there's no music, no B-roll, no extras, just me talking, one cut after another. It's exactly what we want. So now we're going to add in our B-roll. And so for that, I'm going to start here at the beginning and add my intro. So I'm gonna go out to my finder actually, and I have that under my branding. And this is an After Effects intro that I created. I'll do a separate video on After Effects at some point and some basic tips to help you with that. 
but I'm just going to drag that in. And you'll see it appears really small because my video is in a higher resolution than the intro itself. So if I right click and scroll down and click scale to frame size, pulls it right up. But I see I got some black bars there at the top. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and make sure that's properly fitted, maybe 115. Perfect. So that's the intro that plays that animation. Cool. All right, then I'm going to drag this clip in a little bit because I like to start it. And we're going to add a, oh, probably like an iris or a spiral transition. So if we go here to our effects panel, we'll go to video transitions. And we're going to go to iris. And we're going to do iris round on this guy. So now what that's doing is that's adding a moving transition to this element, the intro. And whatever's underneath it will begin to display. So as I kind of go over this and my computer renders it as I start talking it kind of peels away and I think I'm gonna drag that back this way just a little bit to line up with that intro I think that looks good cool all right let's move on move on down the line um, I really don't have a ton of b-roll to add in this video I have some shots that I took with some pictures and examples that I'll throw in here um, and some graphics. So let's talk about those. So here's my basic number one. And I'm going to add a graphic. So if I go to the graphics panel and I click this little text button, I can start typing over my video. So let's type in basic number one. And I can drag this little text box, this element, where it appears on my video timeline. And right about there is good. I'm going to click my Move Selection tool. And we're going to bump up the size of that. Uh, let's, say, let's say to about 400. I like to make it just front and center. 700, what does that look like? We can center it or align it with our alignment tools here. And I like to pick a certain font. I like to use Century Gothic, if I can spell. Century Gothic Bold, that's what we're going with. And let's make that even larger. Let's make it 900. Again, we'll align that. All right, I like the way that looks. That's front and center. I lied, I didn't like the way that looked. I wanted it stacked like this. And I'm actually going to pull my letters in a little bit closer. There we go. We'll just have that flash up on screen for a second. So now if we play, You're using basic number one orientation. That looks decent. We're actually going to change this. So I'm going to cut my text there and jump over to this side. And we're going to rename this to orientation. Oh my goodness, I can't spell. And I want this to line up for when I actually say the word orientation. So I'm going to scoot this back a bit and then just shorten it. So now the final product should look like this. Where you're using basic number one orientation. Do I hold my phone like this or like this? All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, it's a little bit laggy because I'm trying to record and edit at the same time. So I do apologize for that. But I'm going to drag this down just a little bit lower. Again, center it. And we'll move on to the next part. I made it to my second basic, so I'm going to talk about composition. And I'm actually just going to copy what I have here. So if I highlight those, click C. And the way Premiere works is I have to drag it, put it in at the end of my timeline, because it likes to put all of your copied video files in this V1. So if I paste it here, it's going to wreck what I've got going on in there. And that's not great. So I'm going to undo that. And actually, since I have this one lifted up, because I'm reading and going to play, be playing uh, B-roll over that whole point, I can just put it in there and not have to go all the way to the end of my timeline. I'm lazy that way. So I'm going to line this up with where I say second basic. <laughs> basic composition. So i got to change this to read basic number two and composition. So the way I do this is I just move the playhead over the element that I want to edit, go up here. And I double click on it, 
and then it's just a text editor at this point. So I'm going to turn on my caps lock and call it composition. And I got to make that a bit smaller. So if I command A to select all of it, I'll bring it down to about 550 or so. That's eh, still a little cut off. Let's call it 520. So I start saying composition a little earlier in this one. So I'm going to adjust it. So now that's looking pretty good. It's a little laggy on the playback here, but that leads me to my second basic composition. Now that you're holding looking all right, looking all right. Let's keep moving. So this is where I start listing off the different rules for photography. And that's why I actually have my B-roll section here. I'm going to jump over to that panel. And these are some still images that are pulled off the web. Just some PNG images that are transparent that I'm going to throw over this video. And I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing them. So to create some contrast, I'm actually going to click new item here and click on color mat. That's just telling me the size. I'm going to make a white color mat. Let's call it white background. And that ends up in my project panel here. And I'm going to drag that over and try to put it underneath some of these B-roll clips just so I can better see the contrast in them. Oh yeah, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. So we've got this one. I'm going to select it, copy, go back over to my main panel drag it over and I'm going to do that for all of the pictures that I want to put in at that point. I'm just going to manipulate and move these images around so that they appear as I'm talking. And photos are super easy. So you can see it shows up really small. Again, if I select it, right click, scroll down, scale the frame size. It's now looking a little bit bigger and like it's part of the image and I'm going to scale it up a little bit more kind of to that that works so now the leading lines part I actually didn't have an image for so I'm thinking I'm gonna try to make it out of the graphics so bear with me a second okay I think I managed to get something that's gonna work it's not super pretty but I just took the pen tool and drew a couple lines I think it's gonna work out fine it gets the point across it's only on the screen for a second you get the idea let's move on now we're at the third and final basic again I'm just copying from the second one going to paste it here into the video one channel and we're going to line it up here and rename it. This is the point that I'm going to add some b-roll of my own. Some photos I shot with some of the video as an example and that's why I move these clips up to a different channel just so I know at what point I want to do that. So I'm actually going to move them back down and what happens is if I highlight these clips I'm just reading off of a script at this point so I make sure I get my wording accurate. I'm going to press command shift on my keyboard <clears throat> and that's going to disable these clips so that they're not even playing in the background the computer's not even trying to load them on top of the b-roll that I'm adding so if I go over to my b-roll tab here I can look at exactly what I want to bring over and then start building it as I'm talking about it one small tip as I'm moving things over here I am dragging some b-roll over to overlay onto my voice over here and I've got this clip of my keyboard that I kind of filmed that I'm going to be using. I have this empty audio track with it and I don't want to drag it over. You see how I select one, it selects both of them. If I select it and then press Command L on my keyboard, it unlinks them. Similarly, I can take two clips, highlight it, press Command L and it links them together. But to unlink Command L, then I can copy and paste just the video or the audio file to bring it over. I'm about to do some, a eh, little bit of video magic in here. I'm going to add some effects that help to keep this footage not so shaky. It's going to help to keep it stable. So I'm actually just going to mute my channel here. So as I play it, you're not hearing me twice. This footage is a little bit wobbly. So I'm going to go in here to video effects, go down to distort and go to warp stabilizer. And I'm going to drag this effect onto my clip. And it may or may not work that well. Um, it's got a lot of keys in there. It might warble the image too much instead of stabilize it. But we'll throw it on there and just see what happens. And we'll jump over to my next clip here. And this one, I'm actually going to, I filmed it this way. I'm actually going to play it backwards and slow it down. So we have to do a couple different steps here. What I'm going to do is select the image and press Command R on my keyboard. This brings up my speed or duration. And I'm going to click reverse speed. 
and that plays it backwards. So now I start at the other end and I start moving that way through the keyboard. Awesome. So now we can adjust the speed ramping of it. So then what we're going to do is make sure that clip is selected, press Command R again, and we have a percentage here. So I'm going to slow it down to about 80%. That's about as slow as you can go when filming at 60 frames per second before your frames start to look really choppy. So then if I hit play here, it plays back in just slightly more slow motion. And I'm going to try dropping it down a little bit more and show you what happens. I'll go to 50%. And that's not looking too horrible, actually. I'm going to right click and scroll down and go to time interpolation, optical flow. That just helps it to be less choppy. So we're actually going to speed ramp this. So I'm, I've got the clip selected. I'm actually going to right click on this and scroll down and go to nest. This essentially creates a different layer of the clip on top of itself and lets me add different effects, kind of overwriting what I've already done. Since I already have different speed effects on it and I'm going to be doing even more, it just helps the clip not get too confused about what you're asking it to do. So you don't need to do this, but I find it just, it helps in the long run. So I'm gonna find the point that I want it to ramp up, which is about right here. And I'm gonna scroll down to my speed in my effect controls. I'm gonna keyframe that, expand that out, and then find the point that I want to slow down again, right about here. And I'll keyframe that again, move my playhead in a bit, and then just drag my speed up in between those two points. And what that should give me is within those two points, I should get some nice speed ramping. So let's see how that looks. All right, that, that worked a little bit. I, I think I have to go way faster than that if I'm going to get any kind of awesome effect with it. I think I finally got it looking nice. So what I've, I've done is I've adjusted these little keyframing points here to ramp it up and down properly. So what you get in this clip is smooth, fast, smooth. And that's what we're looking for. We can cut off the excess part of that piece and go back to that. And we're going to check on how this warp stabilized footage did. And fingers crossed it turned out okay. That's actually looking pretty good, smooth. I mean, it's choppy because of my playback, but it's looking good. And that's speed ramped and I continued in slow motion. Awesome, and we'll keep rolling. And the rest of my video is just me rambling here. So I'm actually just gonna add a fade out at the end. So if I go over to my effects, my video transitions, dissolve, cross dissolve. This is the like most used transition ever in any kind of editing. And then I'm also going to add in a fade in my audio just so we lose any kind of background noise gradually and it's not abrupt. So this is how the video would end. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Looks good. And I forgot that I wanted to add some B-roll in the beginning that I shot. So I'm going to go back to my B-roll sequence here. And pretty much everything up to this point, I'm going to select, unlink, copy and paste at the end of my timeline, drag it up and over. And I wanna see how that looks towards the beginning of my video. Like I said, I wanted to add it in the beginning and just completely forgot. And I'm actually warp stabilizing all of it so that it looks pretty, looks nice. Thank you, Premiere Pro's auto-saving my project. One final tip for you. I highly, highly, highly recommend you get into the habit of pressing Command S as often as you remember it because it will save your project and save you so many headaches later on if you lose a project. I think Premiere auto saves every like 15, 20, 30 minutes for you. So that you can get a lot done in that time. And if you lose a project after that point, it's a huge pain to catch up and do all that work over again. So highly recommend getting into the habit of pressing Command S. Anyway, side tangent. So that should be everything for this. All the graphics are in, B-roll's looking good. If you're wondering what this B-roll looks like in the beginning, I'm gonna tell you to go watch this video on my channel because I'm not gonna show you right here because it's rendering, it's gonna look awful. It'll look way better on the final video. So our next step at this point is to go out and find some music, some royalty-free music that I can use in the video. And that's what my next video will actually be about. I'll spend a whole one just talking about that process. 
So I'll see you in the next video.